Hi everyone and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History for an episode in our little series, That Dress. In this episode, I think I might have to renounce my title of Filthiest Woman Alive because we're going to be looking at Van Smith's incredible design for Divine in that 1972 camp cult classic, Pink Flamingos. Now, I'm sure there are those of you out there who are thinking, Amanda, have you lost your mind? This dress in an episode of That Dress? Especially when you put it in context, look at the other episodes of That Dress that I've done so far. That dress and that iconic dress. And Jean-Louis for Marilyn Monroe and Jean-Louis for Rita Hayworth and Gilda and Princess Grace's gorgeous wedding gown and most recently Adrian for Billy Burke. Now these are dresses worthy of an episode but you know what I genuinely think that this dress is as well not least of all because 2019 at the Metropolitan Museum of Art Costume Institute yes camp notes on fashion we just saw the Met Gala, didn't we? The Met playing with the idea of camp and kitsch and good taste and bad taste when applied to fashion. And we're going to be discussing what it means to have bad taste, good taste a little later on. But before we get stuck in, remember, you can subscribe to the channel anytime by clicking that little icon there or that big button there. Don't forget to click the little notification bell so you get informed of upcoming episodes on the Ultimate Fashion History. And don't forget to click like if you do. Right, on to that dress. In the interest of full disclosure, I should remind you all that yes, there is a 20th century style icon episode on Divine in which I probably touch upon that dress. I don't remember. I never watch the episodes after I've finished them. I'm too self-critical. But one thing I remember from my research is that Divine, Glenn Milstead, did not consider himself a drag queen or drag artist. He considered himself an actor who sometimes played women and sometimes played men. Drag artists of his era hated him. This is Danny LaRue, a very famous British drag artist, and I have no idea how he felt about Divine, but this is how drag artists traditionally presented themselves and in many ways still do. It was really a celebration of femininity, style, female beauty, and then came Divine. But like I said, Divine didn't consider himself part of the drag community and certainly not part of the drag aesthetic. Pink Flamingos debuted in 1972 and as Daily Variety says here in its review, one of the worst, vile, stupid and repulsive films ever made. Now, with 45 years or so retrospect, we can look back and see it really was an exercise in intentional bad taste and really did create this concept of camp, kitsch, B-movie, chic. It was sort of like punk rock. It was out to shock. I really see a lot of parallels between the work of John Waters and punk rock, at least his early work. And here's a quote from John Waters. To understand bad taste, one must have very good taste. And I think that's pretty true. Of course, Divine plays Bab Johnson, billed as the filthiest woman alive. And there she is in that dress. It was designed by Van Smith. This is a later photograph of him. I couldn't find a photograph of Mr. Smith from the 70s. But he was the costume designer for Divine on all of the John Waters movies until Mr. Smith's death in 2004. Here is that dress. Now, this is how Van Smith would work. He designed exclusively for Divine other wardrobe did the incredible costumes for the rest of the characters but Van Smith he was Divine's designer he would sketch up an outfit and take it to this little old lady seamstress in Baltimore God knows what this woman thought she was working on but she always delivered the dress is made from some kind of stretch polyester and it has that 
iconic trumpet effect at the bottom made of tool, peppered with either sequins or paillettes, I can't tell which. And of course, what really makes this outfit is the visible panty line. It would be nothing without it. So we can all look at this dress and say, yeah, this is in bad taste. But why? Take a look at this beautiful runway gown here. Of course, the textiles are going to be far more sumptuous. The beading and the embroidery is pure artistry, but really all we have to do is add sleeves and give it a scoop neckline and it's essentially the same dress. So what makes the gown on the right bad taste and the gown on the left beautiful? Is it because of the shape of the model? Is it because there's no visible panty line? Is it because of Divine's hair and makeup? Well, designer Gareth Pugh didn't think so when he put all of his models in Divine masks for one of his collections. And that certainly didn't take away from the beautiful tailoring and elegance of his collection. So what makes something good taste? What makes something bad taste? It's all about context. But of course, that dress wouldn't be half as good if it wasn't for the makeup, which Van Smith created for Divine, and it was a makeup that he used throughout his career. Turning lovely little Glenn Milstead here into the iconic Divine. And it started with Glenn Milstead agreeing to have his hairline shaved so that these huge triangular eyebrows could be achieved. The makeup look was very inspired by the makeup was very inspired by the 1960s and evidently there were still women in Baltimore who did their makeup like this, albeit without those eyebrows. This makeup look is as iconic as that dress, which is why designer Jeremy Long used it for his sweaters and embroidered tops in one of his collections. Van Smith was also in charge of Divine's undergarments and instead of using just a regular drag artist bra for Divine's bosoms, what he did was to construct a bra filled with lentils because he wanted Divine's faux breasts to be saggy and malleable. And it's really quite effective, isn't it? Anyway, that dress is as iconic as any other, in my opinion. I always say, don't I, that if you recognize a dress from a movie and you can name the actor who wore it and name the dress, even if they're not wearing it, then you know it is iconic and worth talking about. And to my point, here is Melissa McCarthy for Entertainment Weekly channeling her inner divine in that dress and I think she looks badass. She looks sexy. That's a great dress. There are divine dolls wearing that dress and I love how this one has the visible panty line. And even high fashion editorials have looked back to Pink Flamingos, John Waters and Divine for inspiration time and time again. And I really think that this idea of trailer trash chic started with John Waters and Pink Flamingos. If you look at this still of Divine running from her trailer with the yard flamingos and then you look at some high fashion images, you can really see this idea of camp kitsch, the interplay between good taste and intentional bad taste really is evident. And there's another example, the animal print mini skirt with a floral top on a plastic lounge chair outside of a trailer. Come on, pink flamingos. And I think that the John Waters aesthetic really inspired our current concept of intentional kitsch. Like here, can't you see Divine living in this shabby chic kitschy trailer? I would like to live in that shabby chic kitschy trailer. Well, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? You can contact me through my website, amandahalley.com. Join our Facebook group. We always have a good time over there. Check out our books at our publishing company, Dean Street Press. I'll be back very soon with new material on the UFH, so just click that little circle to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye for now.